Hey everyone, Laurel here, Minnesota Zone 5A. I'm just going to do a tour after our first frost here. We officially got our first frost Tuesday night. It's now the weekend and we're having a little bit of a warm up this week. I think tomorrow is going to be the warmest day in the low 80s. Um, but um, yeah, when I woke up Wednesday morning, was getting ready about 6 a.m., I looked at my phone and it said 33 degrees. So we got down to freezing air temperature, which is a frost. Um, some things made it, some things didn't. I haven't seen a whole lot of stuff that's 100% dead, but uh, like the leaves died on a lot of things. So, And some things got nipped, like these geranium down here. Um, you can see they're not dead. They still have plenty of healthy leaves. It's just some leaves got nipped in all of the uh, blooms and buds um, because of the cold air. So like if you lived in a warmer climate where you get sort of a fluke freak early frost or say in the spring um, you get kind of a late frost, um, things aren't necessarily dead for good. You know, you don't have to get rid of it. You can cut stuff back if it still has time to grow. Here though, of course, in the fall, the end of the fall, we're kind of getting to the last two weeks of October now. Um, we're only going the other way to more cold. So, but I just thought I'd walk around, see what got hit, see what made it through. I just love hydrangeas. They so many different seasons of interest. Even now these blooms are kind of starting to brown. This is the, um, I'm, my mind is cooperating. How many times have I said it? Firelight hydrangeas, these two. So this bloom kind of emerged late so you can see it still has some like pink raspberry tones on it and the rest are becoming more of like a muted mauve and turning kind of papery and they eventually all turn brown. And I like to leave them up but they don't really last through the snow I've found. Um, they're kind of brittle and they break off and blow around. Um, things are, we still have had almost no rain. So I've been sprinkling. Um, but like the hostas, some years they make it to where they turn that beautiful golden yellow color. Other years not. Um, and it's interesting things that were like kind of protected underneath something else um, tend to do better because they're a little more shielded from the cold air. Like these, this fern back here got nipped. Although if it were earlier in the season, I could cut it back and it would flush back out. Ooh, kind of chilly breeze today, this morning. Anyway, love this viburnum though. This, the blueberries on this, so pretty. This one, well, I guess it's starting to get some fall color. It seems kind of late this year, although we have had such a warm year. So uh, some things are pretty late, but I had a couple coleus in here. Those are toast. They're not dead. Like you can see at the base of the velveteen coleus here, there are some pink leaves still. So again, if this were like earlier in the summer and it was a fluke, um, you could cut these back but and, and wait for them to flush if you were so inclined. Kind of bummed the Sun King Aurelia got nipped so hard. Love the color of that. I'm always sad when this one dies back. It's just such a stunning plant. Um, Otherwise, we've got some pretty golden color here on this willow, uh, sage leaf willow, and the limelight hydrangeas turning uh, golden leaves there. This one over here is little lime, also with the beautiful yellow fall color on its leaves. A couple more coleus, and this was an annual salvia. Boy, this looks even worse today. Of course, it's been so dry. Um, and then, yeah, the coleus in here, there's a plectranthus. They all got nipped. The perennial salvia, however, did not. They're just getting their fall color. Hardy things, um, these don't survive winter. So if, when it gets down to freezing, I harvest these. This is rosemary and then Brigart and sage. Harvest those before it gets down to freezing. Mm, that sage just smells like fall. Um, so those did fine. Same thing with the salvia. This is annual salvia over here. I'm kind of impressed that this one did so well, actually. Um, that is the uh, Play in the Blues salvia. These geranium, too. I think I am going to try to overwinter these. So again, the leaves got nipped. It's funny. It's almost, I wonder 
how the air was moving because like you could see this one has a lot more damage on the leaves versus this one almost no damage on the leaves it was just the blooms that got got damaged but these are still perfectly alive um, so I think I'll dig these out I'm going to try the method of overwintering them bare root in a box and just see what happens I got nothing to lose if they die so I might as well test it out cabbage also frost hardy verbena this is superbena uh, I forget the name of it it's one of the new ones also frost hardy I've got some more geraniums down here that I will probably try to overwinter as well I did pick all my peppers other than the little dinky ones but these aren't really good for eating at that size anyways they're too small yeah peppers not frost hardy so those I'm glad I picked those um, even these peppers that I didn't pick, I kind of left a couple sometimes because you never know if you don't, well, actually, that's not too bad. That They're still pretty firm. We'll see. I got two big bags of them, though. Marigolds. I'm kind of surprised that these did get hit so hard just because marigolds are usually um, fairly frost tolerant. You can see the alyssum wasn't bothered at all. And not all the marigolds are dead, it's just the foliage and the blooms got killed back. So if we had more season left, I could probably cut them back and they would bounce. Um, more things that are very tolerant. Calibrachoa down here, all of these did fine. More alyssum. Again, a geranium where the blooms got nipped and a little bit of the foliage got some frostbite, but they're fine. I love this little calibrachoa down here too. And then the, some of the marigolds in the raised bed, they all got frostbite, but so I'll start pulling these out. Um, we've got a superbina that's fine. This lantana, you can see green foliage down there, but the upper foliage got hit. This is a um, nemesia, looks untouched. Same thing with the petunia. Oh, got it. Itchy. There we go carrots. Um, I always wait until we're getting much cooler temperatures and we get a couple frosts before I harvest. It takes a long time for the ground to get cold enough to freeze or the raised bed. Um, and they get sweeter. They condense their sugars in cold temperatures. So, And usually I'm just busy with other stuff and don't get around to it anyways. You can see the zinnias and the um, Angelonia in here definitely got hit. Again, not dead. There are life, there's life underneath the top layers, but these I usually don't bother to clean out till spring. It's kind of tucked away and hidden back here. So um, let's see this stuff. So everything that's closer under the eave of the garage uh, looks fairly unbothered. I think maybe the salvia blooms got a little bit nipped. Um, yeah, I can see a little damage on the leaves, but it's like it's when it's under it's sheltered under a structure and even like these marigolds, they were up against the compost bin. So like this plant here is just fine, whereas the other ones got damaged. Again, not dead, but I'll harvest those blooms for my friend. She makes dye out of um, different plant materials. Um, this cabbage is just fine. Actually, I should just harvest that. It's ready. It's not going to grow anymore. Um, I'm kind of surprised. This is a, um, what is it? The baby tut, I think. Uh, papyrus grass. That one did just fine, but the salvia and coleus that were behind it got completely fried. Snapdragons are very frost hardy. You can see those did well over here. The basil got fried. Um, so, but a lot of this stuff, like I said, I don't bother with it until spring. Unless I have lots of extra time to get to it, it's just not worth the effort. Dahlias over here, not so much. The ones that were more exposed, kind of bummed because this one had a bud on it that might have opened, but oh well. Um, impatiens, and these are, new, uh, well, New Guinea impatiens, but they're sun patients. Those got really burned on the tips. These I might just cut back and let them go until the next frost. And there's no reason I need to cut them out or tear them out. Um, but the dahlias I will dig up, and now that they're dead, I'll just cut them back. Well, look, I got a bloom, so I know what this one is. Oh, it's fairway spur. It didn't open all the way, but I recognize it from the color. Fairway spur is a really pretty one. 
I grew that last year too and it was a favorite. Um, this Cosmos plant pretty much was dead to begin with or dying or wilting. Um, these Cosmos, the blooms that were exposed got nipped by frost, but the buds were fine and some of them have opened. The plants didn't die. The Zinnia too, it was, well, this one was about to open. Um, yeah, Zinnia is not super frost hardy. Oh, same thing with this Mandevilla. But again, there's life in it and just got frost bit. So, it's a pretty color. The salmon zinnia. And you can see the leaves are just fine. So, I'll probably just maybe cut the blooms off and probably won't have time to put up anymore. But you never know. I don't think we have another, well, we have, a think, a chance of frost in our forecast, but not guaranteed. The Alternanthera. Definitely got frost bit. I also neglected watering, so I don't know if that's... No, I don't think so. It hasn't been that long. Aster still has the pretty purple blooms kind of towards the end of its bloom cycle now. And it looks like I just might get another bloom coming out. I can see a bud there on the uh, hardy hibiscus. That would be fun. Hopefully that one stays warm enough long enough for that to open. I'm kind of surprised that this one didn't get damaged at all. Um, maybe minor damage right there. Uh, I forget what that's called now. That was a super clearance plant. Really cool foliage. I waited till it went on sale because it was kind of pricey. But the zinnia and the four o'clocks, not so much. Definitely didn't like the frost. Maybe these four o'clocks, I'll try overwintering those bare root. Just see what happens. And my poor zucchini. I got two peppers over here. Um, zucchini plant, though. There are two little fruits down here. I don't know if these will do anything. No, it doesn't look like it. They probably didn't get uh, properly pollinated anyway. I don't know if there were the right, if there were male flowers around to pollinate them. Um, stuff over here did good, though. The Nemesia on this side also looking good. Completely unbothered. These geraniums, undecided whether I will dig them up and store or not. Again, it's all, it's all what I have time to get to. Never, never enough time. Sedum always looks beautiful. Um, of course, perennials were just fine. I love this is the Shenandoah switchgrass panicum. It has those kind of probably can't see it really on camera, but it's like pinkish tones to the seed pods. And then it gets those red tones and the uh, grass blades kind of red and yellow mixed in in the fall. Perennial grasses really are like they are the star of the show in the fall. They really just come to their full splendor late in the season. Just love them. All of my perennial grasses, except for maybe the, these two, are planted probably in too much shade. So, I don't know if we'll change that. The rose was unbothered. Peach drift rose just blooming away still. Really beautiful color on that late in the season. Um, Gomfrina usually can take a light frost. This was... This was a solid for us though, so you can see it's kind of in a shambles down here. Same thing with the um, Alternanthera. That got fried. But I have other stuff that I need to plant here anyway, so I'll rip that out and plant a couple of the perennials that I picked up. Got the dogwood. Kind of got some frozen leaves on it, but between the dogwood and the viburnum, they have some nice pleasant fall color as well. And then this is the North Wind Panicum here, the switchgrass. Kind of turning this like blonde color. Looks pretty up against the North Pole Arborvita there. Look at the growth tips on that if you can see. I put on some good growth this year. It's really filling in. I might plant another one of those. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do. I'm definitely going to plant this dia dia diacea, diacea next year. I'm going to look for that because that was my test doing this this year and it uh, worked out really well. Butterfly bronze. Snapdragon grew from seed. Beautiful. 
looking gorge. I love the yellow stems on the Millennium Allium over here too. And the beautiful seed heads. And then this is the Boom Chocolata Geranium. I'm uh, really pretty red leaves. Hardy Geranium are known for getting really nice fall color, kind of red, red leafed fall color. Um, all the annuals over here pretty much got toasted. Of course, the coleus. That's the one I'm the most sad about. I knew it wouldn't live forever, but then the Persian shield as well, but I can plant my, I got two more of these little hookera to plant uh, and clearance, so I can get those done now that these plants are ripped out or frozen, I can rip them out. The Virginia also gets really nice fall color. Most Virginia get um, kind of reds and oranges on their leaves. These hostas have started kind of getting their golden tones. And this is the Evolvulus Dwarf Morning Glory that got toasted. It was a nice little patch. I enjoyed that. And then I can get this dandelion out of here now that I can see what's going on amongst the other perennial geranium. Uh, more Nemesia that did well. Dusty Miller, very frost tolerant as well. Canna lilies, not so much, so I'll be able to dig up those tubers and get those stored. The Rudbeckia, this is an annual Rudbeckia, so it will not survive our winter, but Rudbeckia is pretty much all frost tolerant. So some fresh blooms. I did harvest a whole bunch of seeds from these, so that'll be fun to grow next year. I started these from seeds as well. We've got the Bacopa and the two um, Petkoa. Uh, did well over here, but the Persian Shield is done. And then I another rosemary here that I can harvest. And rosemary freezes really well. The sage leaves I usually dry. I'll use most of them, dry a few, and then the rosemary. I just cut them and stick them in a bag in the freezer. Geraniums got toasted, although again, you could cut them back. And maybe I'll do that today, just until I get to cleaning them out. Because they, they didn't die, they've got fresh foliage under layer that was protected by this foliage is still alive. Not thriving, I wouldn't say, but alive in all of these pots. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll just cut the top layer off until I'm ready to... The elephant ears all shrivelly, so I'll dig up those corms or tubers and store those. And this is the... Uh, Mahogany Splendor, Hibiscus, not hardy in my zone. And then all of the impatiens that are mixed in among the uh, ground covers over here got fried. So no more color. Again, I don't pull these out until spring. I just leave them be. Um, that planter I will pull out, though. Uh, those impatiens were a little bit sheltered here by the lilac. But um, I do get rid of those, that planter, obviously. And I actually have a plant that's going to go here. So I can do that this weekend, hopefully. Um, but yeah, more impatience. There is still some, some of the lower branches. Again, we're sheltered. It doesn't take much to shelter it from a light frost. But these coleus are done for. Next year, I'm hoping these two hosta will fill in even more. And I won't have that gap there. The ferns got a little bit fried on their upper leaves. Um, a juga is semi-evergreen. It's pretty much unbothered. Same thing with the lungwort. Love the golden color on this. Oh, that's right. I have a... Oh, no, I did plant it. I don't know what I'm doing these days. On the Solomon seal, kind of arching over. And then this, I wasn't sure about what was going to happen to this. This is the Amazon Sunset Lotus Vine. And you can see the upper branches here got crispy from the frost, but it, it's fairly frost tolerant. Same thing with the petunia and the verbena, although the petunia looks real sad. Real sad. That's just being worn out from the season. But yeah, this Lotus Vine still, still looking really good. That, of course, is an annual. I did buy another GM on clearance, so I will be planting that in here as well. Um, let me look, I didn't even look back here at stuff yet. Backtrack a little. 
Um, you can see on the ground cover the verbena, frost tolerant, same thing with the mezu, very frost tolerant, basil, no, foxglove, yes, those are perennial or biennial. And this canna was about to open. Rats, missed that bloom. These are the two that I'm sad about because I just love, these were some of my two surprise colors that I enjoyed. Although I do have another of these, um, once I dig up that canna, I have another of these buttered rum hookerella that I'm going to put in here. So the hosta leaves got kind of frozen, but enough, not so much that they're not showing fall color. This impatien, sheltered here by the uh, Aurelia, is fine. Need to water some more of this. I don't know if this Arbovita is dying or I know they they just tend to shed their leaves in the fall too so I guess we'll see what happens in this overwinter and into spring of course we've got perennial grasses back here newly planted this year and then these are the random annual cab oh my god look at all those cabbage worms holy moly Ugh. maybe I'll just pull those out but <laughs> I can't, well, cabbage Tithonia, I'm kind of surprised it is sheltered though. This normally is not frost tolerant, but some of the blooms survived even if the leaves look fried. This is the uh, Cheyenne Sky Panicum. Also getting that beautiful, these were just newly planted last summer, last fall really. Beautiful tones to the grass. So I'm hoping, I want to, there's a mulberry, it's, these are all like volunteer seedlings and they're growing through the fence so I want to cut two of them out of here that are growing through the fence and that'll provide a lot more sun over in this little corner. Sweet potato vine, not so much. I'm surprised it's not completely dead. Over here this gomfrina. Gomfrina blooms just they still look good though for a long time even after the plants did. They dry well too. So, and then this Amsonia getting its golden butterscotchy kind of fall color a little bit. These Echinacea got mites, I can tell by the blooms. Um, ir ir they start with an E, this type of mite that preys on Echinacea. And they're microscopic and they live kind of in the bloom and they eat the petals as they come out. So, when you have deformed blooms, I struggled with that on the patch of white Echinacea for. Probably three years, the blooms were all deformed from mites. So the best method is to cut them all back. So I will cut back all these echinacea fully to the ground, the ones that I've seen mite damage. I don't leave them up over the winter and I dispose of the cuttings. And anytime I see a deformed bloom, I immediately cut it off as well. That helps control the population. I don't spray though because I do not want to, they're predatory mites also that will help with the issue and spraying will kill both the bad mites and the good mites so I don't want to spray. This looks still nice and fresh. This is uh, Cat's Pajamas Nepeta down here. Newly planted one. That one has been about that last fall and it's been in its container ever since. Um, but this coleus, little patch of coleus over here died back so but now you can really see the evergreens a little bit more. This newly planted Anna's Magic Ball in here. More golden color on the Limelight Prime Hydrangea. And then this is another uh, Rock and Play in the Blue Salvia. Just love how big and tall those bloom stalks are. They're so huge. And then this is the Aronia. This, these get really pretty fall color too. Chokeberry. This is, I think, the Low Scape Mound Aronia. I planted it new last year. That's why it's kind of wonky looking. It was a clearance plant. So I didn't do too much trimming. I'm just kind of letting it establish itself before I start really worrying about shaping it up. As always, the sweet tea hookerella is looking beautiful. I have a lot of bulbs, this bare area over here. I have a lot of uh, spring blooming bulbs planted over here. So I don't usually fill that in. And the rocking golden delicious salvia that I got to see bloom for the first time still is in bloom. I'm surprised I expected to come out and this one to be gone. But nope, just a little damage on the leaves. It's still got these pretty, pretty 
bright red bloom, really late season. And the bubble hydrangeas, mostly defoliating. Need to sprinkle again. It is so dry. We got no rain in September. Well, a tenth of an inch in September. Not even a tenth of an inch in all of October. And there's like nothing in the forecast. It's so frustrating. Just can't win. We got all this beautiful rain early on. And now nothing. Just can't win. They should put us gardeners in charge of the weather. Uh... Gardeners and farmers. <laughs> this Plectranthus, uh, the areas that were shielded, um, still looking good, but the areas that were exposed, not so much. And the petunia is just done for just because of the long summer. Um, but the alyssum, still doing its thing. This little patch of GM still looks good. I love that gold color on the Solomon seal. And then the honeysuckle, Kinsley's Ghost Honeysuckle, gets beautiful sort of yellow gold fall color too. So that's starting to show up, which is nice. And over here on the patio, you can see the tropical, this Calibrecoa. Look how big these blooms are. I just love this one. Great punch, Calibrecoa, one of my favorites. Um... Calibrecoa doesn't mind frost one bit, but the canna not so much. Again, I save all my canna tubers, dig them out, knock the soil off, clean them up in the spring. I just stick the root whole root ball in a box in the basement all winter. Then in the spring, all of the dead parts of the root, it's a rhizome, so it's all connected. You can see all the dead parts are all desiccated and dried. The soil is a lot easier to get off of it too in the spring because that has dried out. Um, and then I just look for the live growth points and cut those out and pot those up in the spring. So this mezu, everything else got in here got fried, this begonia and everything, but mezu is looking good. I did put some tender things, some of the things that I'm going to overwinter in the garage for the past few days. So this geranium stayed out surprisingly no damage just old blooms not sure whether i'm gonna remains to be seen whether i overwinter that if i have space this one i will this one was just so full of blooms this is the uh, maverick scarlet picotty uh, so i stuck that in the garage we had like three nights of cold weather two of them only stayed at about 35 36 so no frost but then the third night was the frost so I put this one in the garage too. This is the Americana coral. I expect it to come out and have the lavender be dead. I've never grown lavender before. This is just French lavender, but it did just fine. Same thing, Dicondra Silver Falls. Doesn't mind a little frost, light frost. The dahlias over here, however, definitely got frostbitten. So I'll be able to dig these out and overwinter these tubers again. I don't have a good method. I think I stored them. I stored them in uh, vermiculite in cardboard boxes in the basement last year, and that did well. They always, like, I dig them up and wash, wash rinse off the, the mud and dirt that's on them, and then I let them dry for a couple days, and it's like they completely get shriveled, so I didn't think that they would survive, but I just went ahead and saved them anyways. And turns out even the shriveled ones sprouted. So I'll do that again. Save me some money. It's like other than the, well, even this, it's still sending out blooms here. Um, the toucan coral canna got a little bit frostbitten, but otherwise like everything along the porch and it's definitely sheltered. Some things have double shelter. So you've got the eve of the, eve of the porch You've got sort of radiating heat absorbed by the concrete during the day and then radiated up overnight. And these are just pretty frost tolerant plants over here too. So this whole row is still looking good. All the stuff on the table went into the garage for a few nights. Rex begonia, those are not even close to frost tolerant. And then this tray of stuff, the mezu probably would have been fine, but I just... They're small. I just stuck them on a tray. Those are things I'm going to overwinter. 
um, this area I'll be cleaning out because pretty much all of this, the hyacinth bean vine, impatience, um, definitely. I am shocked that these are still standing though. <laughs> these leaves. That is just crazy. That is, God, diamond, the euphorbia got frostbitten, but diamond snow, I think, or diamond mountain euphorbia, and then some of these caladium survived, but, and then these geranium too. I, again, undecided about overwintering these, but the other caladium, not only do they not like frost, they don't like anything below about 40 degrees, so they've been drooping for quite some time. And again, you can see the impatience are not dead, but it's, I got to get this stuff cleared out. So same thing with this uh, coleus, not dead, but I got to get all this stuff cleared out and stored because winter is coming, like it or not. So this stuff lasted a little bit better because it was sheltered, kind of just the tips of things that were sticking out like this coleus. The canna was already turning brown, but it got frostbitten. This angelonia did just fine, but these are these are pretty well protected here. And then it's kind of a narrow space between. So they've got this little safe little tunnel. Um, more caladium that have to come out. And this is nice that we're having a stretch of warm weather now because I can kind of do this at a slower pace. Last year I had about a week to get all of these pots cleared out, stored in the garage once it starts getting staying in the 40s or low 50s during the day the soil freezes overnight and it is not warm enough to unfreeze during the day and then you're SOL. So these elephant ears I'll dig up. I do have a Tradescantia that I may try and save as a house plant. Last year I had one and well with the kittens I don't know but I brought it to work and just gave it to a co-worker so I forgot to bring in this spider plant when we got the frosty nights, but it did fine. Tucked up and safe here against the shed and under the eave. Licorice plant, very frost hardy. Got a, uh, what's it called? <laughs> a hosta that I need to plant. Everything that was kind of tucked up against the wall under the eaves did just fine. Um, Plectranthus, somewhat frost tolerant. Again, it didn't die. It's just the tip sticking out got burned. Um, this is the coleus that I'm bummed about. I've been preparing myself to say goodbye, but this was just so glorious. This big Wicked Witch coleus was just so huge. And look, you can see it's one, one single plant that that grew from, this huge thing. That was beautiful. That was probably my favorite thing this summer. But now it's gone, so there's next year I'll just have to bring buy a new one. Um, yeah, so I'll slowly work on this. Elephant ears that were open got burned, but that one was unfurling and it did just fine. Also, it's tucked under the eave of the garage. So, and you can kind of see like how my pots are now in here, how I have them spaced and planted up a little bit. Also the watermelon, mini me watermelon coleus. Not dead, you can see signs of life, but dead enough for me. And this is another, this is the cerveza and lime plectranthus. Again, where you can see plectranthus is sort of frost tolerant. It won't get killed, but it'll die back a little. Same thing with lantana. I think lantana is hardy to about his own eight. Some varieties, maybe a seven. You know, it's native kind of like to Texas and other areas. These are my sale. I got this shrub. This is the candy corn spirea that I'm going to plant in the back now that those annuals died off. Same thing up front. We'll walk up there. That's the GM that I'm going to plant. And then I got another one of this Carex. Some more begonias that overwintered overnight. This is what I am shocked about though. These, this one was the most exposed. These are tropical. They're dressing, no, cordialine. And I expected to come out and have these looking, you know, like this, like just dead, but no, they were fine. <laughs> I mean, a little bit damaged, but I have three of them. There's that one is the most exposed. There's this one. Look how beautiful those red stems are on that. And that pink stripe in the leaves. I, I really enjoyed these this year. That was a new, new one for me. And this one just fine too, just all the grasshopper damage. 
I was shocked that those weren't completely toasted. So, this coleus didn't make it. <laughs> so I'll clear out this pot today, probably. See what I get to. Even the alternate there, I'm kind of surprised. This is usually more frost tolerant, but I don't know, maybe I'm remembering wrong. These plants, well, the mums are, if it freezes, you need to take your mums inside or cover them, but the frost, they're just fine. And these are old. I've had these for a few years. I just keep overwintering them on my porch or in, maybe I had them in the garage. This lantana was totally covered under the eave, kind of sheltered against the house. Look at the pretty colors back here, that kind of salmony watermelon color. So this one's fine. And then this begonia too, normally begonias would have gotten fried, but this was sheltered, kind of double whammy, sheltered under the table, also under the eave of the porch. And so I just kind of shoved it back a little ways, hoping that um, it would be fine. And it was, even this one up here, tucked in, didn't get frostbite. So all of these other begonias I put in uh, in the garage. But yeah, stuff that was tucked up against the house. Undamaged. I'll be cleaning out these two pots. Hopefully today. Well, this weekend anyway. Licorice vine. This one I think just struggled being in the sun. I don't think the golden licorice vine likes full sun. I think I've had that issue with it before, but this plectranthus definitely did not like the frost. And then this Dusty Miller. Dusty Miller's super frost tolerant. So um, this one I've overwintered for several years on the porch. Oh, look, I have a stem. I can make a little, I can cut that and put it in a bouquet. A little arrangement, fall arrangement with what's left. That'll be fun. Maybe I'll cut some of those other silver plectranthus stems too. Um, walk up front here. There's some really nice fall color. It's kind of peak. A little bit late this year just because it was, we had a rainy summer, which the trees really liked, and then uh, warm fall. So, um, up here, the seat I'm looking good. This kind of looks messy. I haven't really touched this area in a little while. I feel like I need a little revamp. I always love the, um, uh, Russian sage though in the middle but oh we got my box from Chewy for the kittens I ordered some stuff um, this gets really beautiful fall color the smoke bush tree and then next year when I trim it I think it'll be much more even and I kind of like you know that branch came out but I kind of like how it really opened up and you can see the structure of the trunks on there these begonias, a little bit of frost damage, but you can see what a difference it is when they're, they're under the shelter of this tree here. Just a teeny bit of nipping on the leaves from the cold, but they still look beautiful. So I can just pick off some of that damaged stuff. Same thing, these are Lismachia, not hardy kind here, but Lismachia is hardy many areas and uh, very frost tolerant. This begonia was exposed a little bit more, so you can see a little more damage, but I'm glad because I didn't really get any mums or anything to put out here in their place. The solar flare hookerella, they start out in the spring like a bright chartreuse with a little bit of kind of reddish in the middle. And then as the season goes on, that sort of brown red center spreads out. These look really pretty with frost crystals on them too, like gorgeous. Um, these begonias, not so much. <laughs> These are the, again, not dead. So if I lived in a warmer climate, I could cut them back. Actually, I probably will just to make it look tidy, but I'm, I don't bother pulling these out till spring usually. A lot of stuff, once it's rooted in too, it's a lot easier to get out uh, in the spring when the roots have had some time to decompose. You can see the neighbor's tree there looking pretty, their street tree. Um, I think I might give away this grass at work next year. We'll think about it. I don't really like the look of it though. It looks kind of messy. Do something else there. But these begonias, these surefire rose, 
I will pull these out because I am going to put one of the, uh, the Ice Ballet Carex that I got here, but there are two more uh, sprouts from the ones that died. Those survived. I should water back here, but love. I just love that hellebore, that huge foliage. That one's so pretty. I can't wait for my other ones to get that big. Quick fire, little quick fire hydrangeas always just look stunning. I love how that Solomon seal is just so bright back there. I did plant a lung warrant. That was when I got on clearance for five bucks. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do here yet. I might, I didn't find any sale plants. It's kind of part sun, mostly sun, but also part shade there. So I'm thinking about it. I might just do annual salvia there for next year and see what I can find think about it or see what I can find in the spring on clearance. This mum kind of doing another flush of blooms. That is a hardy mum. Another reason why I would like to get rid of this grass. This grass I think was two dollars or three dollars. Nearly dead. It was a clearance plant. Or I might move it. I'm just not sure. I don't know. Again, as I've said, that's the benefit of clearance plants is you're not really out much if you decide to change it or give it away or you don't like it anymore. So this little mum planter, this one I've overwintered for several years as well. I just stuck this up here because the pot of petunias was just done for. So we got the pink has kind of been blooming all summer. And now it's starting this burgundy and orange is starting in. So little mixed mum planter. And then you can see the sedum. That's lemon coral or lemon ball sedum. Um, the amsonia starting to get its gold fall color. That one is string theory. The coleus back there is done for. Same thing, well, at least the top layers of the four o'clocks. But again, the nemesia, unbothered by the cold. Same thing with these hookerella, hookera. God, these are just magnificent. I just can't believe how huge that got. And it's been full like that all season. And then I love on the fothergilla, they are known for beautiful fall color. So that is the blue shadow fothergilla, kind of a bluish green color in the summer. They're an understory shrub, so they need some shade, um, but just stunning fall color on that. You do see some freeze damage from the cold air on the leaves, but not too bad. And then this also, this barberry gets really nice color in the fall. Just turns kind of bright red and orange. This is the limoncello barberry. Starts real chartreuse green for a long time in the summer too, but then it kind of kind of mid to late summer it turns more green and is more nondescript and then it gets its fall fall color going. I did clear out all of the uh what are those called balsam from over here? I do have some verbena bonariensis that seeds itself here every year. I don't know if I'm gonna keep the hollyhocks next year. They just get you can always already see the fungus on them that's rust. I get that so bad. So I might just dig those out, pull any seedlings that pop up, and do salvia. Because I did this Victoria Blue salvia once it was on clearance. And that is just looking so pretty. Along with this extra zinnia seedling. For a couple years I had, I just seeded zinnias back here all the way across. In the first couple years it was absolutely stunning. But they are so prone to powdery mildew and especially back here. And the third crop was like, just look like crap for most of the summer. So I started doing other stuff. But now I have this little self-seeded area of foxglove. I've got some overdam calamagrostis grass. I planted two echinacea, one of them died, but they were clearance. But I got one going and some Leatrice back here. And then these are the red acre cabbage. Just that bold red cab. I just like plain old red cabbage for how it looks and its texture. So yeah, you can see this beautiful, look at that, look how bright that is. And soon that'll be pretty much the whole shrub will be that tone, really beautiful. So anyway, all in all kind of worked out well. Last year we didn't even get a frost. We just went straight to a freeze and it was like the week of Halloween or something. I remember we got snow on Halloween. We got about six inches of snow on Halloween itself. It was really cold. And so I had like zero time. That's why I ended up having like one week to clear out everything. That was stressful. So I'm glad that 
we get this frost and then a little warm up so I have a couple of weeks at least to work on stuff. My back is happy for that too. So anyway, um, I'll leave you with that. This is also the My Monet Purple Shades Wigella. I've said this in previous videos, but it's supposed to be nice and big like this, like these tall branches. Uh, but two years ago, we got 90 inches of snow in uh, our winter, obviously. And because we have no space, you know, we have to keep our sidewalk clear. And when you get that much snow, there's just nowhere to put it. So it was piled up high. These boxwoods get covered, why they, which is why I think they don't get winter burn every year. They get completely covered with snow and they just bounce back. Um, but this one did not bounce back. It got crushed down pretty, pretty far, so it stayed really flat. So I'm just letting it grow and reestablish some of its longer branches and fill out over the next couple of years. Hopefully we do not get 90 inches of snow again. That was, was a little much. So yeah, I'll leave you with that. All these dead begonias or died back begonias. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Please subscribe.